Once I have the script written and audio recorded, I'll set up the workspace inside Studio. The setup I use works well and allows me to set title durations and transitions precisely where I want them. Okay, so I've done everything on the outside. I have a project folder, subfolders. I've gathered some of the assets that I'm going to use. And I have a script, so I'm technically ready to start the project. I'm going to go into Pinnacle. This is the internal part of what I was talking about earlier. And I'm going to save the movie right away here, just simply because I'm talking a lot trying to do this. And something's going to blow up. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I've also got that into a folder. All right. So I already have project bins here that have been created. If I was going to add another one, I would just simply go up here and give it the name of either the project folder or maybe the file name like this one here. I'm putting this second video together in pieces. So I might call this configure workspace or whatever. Since I already have the assets that I'm going to be using in place, I'm not going to do that. So what I am going to do here is I know how I've structured my uh, presentations. And this is where I start setting up these tracks because this is where we're going to be working. And of course, the title tracks are going to be very important, obviously. So I know, first of all, that I'm going to have section titles. And I know below that, I can't type and talk at the same time. And I'm in my VO room, not at my desk. All right, so now I'm going to have below my titles, I'll explain the order here in a minute. I have a graphics one. Now, normally I would probably just have graphics one here. Recently, I've been doing a lot more with supplemental images and things. So I'm going to create a second graphics file. And then I'm going to add some tracks. I'm going to insert a track below that. This is where I'm going to put my intro, outro videos. And I will explain why that's going in a separate track there in just one second. It's very important. I need one more, at least one more track. I'm going to go ahead and add two more and I'll explain why I'm doing those. All right, so I'm going to add a track below. And this is where my primary audio will go. And I like to put it on the bottom. And again, I'll explain that as we go through why I do that. And then here recently, I've started using more. I'm not using, I'm doing Bible studies, so I don't use music. But I have been using a couple of sound effects. Uh, for some things. So what I'm going to do is just have uh, some supplemental audio if I need it. <clears throat> so these are my tracks. And once I have the tracks laid out, I'm going to right click them and I'm going to go to all track sizes and I'm going to make them small. This space gets really crowded. Once I start laying things in, it will get a little bit more obvious why I'm doing this. All right, now, so this is the basic configuration. And I can slide this up and down and will because most of the time I'm going to be working in these areas here. So I'm not really going to have to have a lot of room. And then if I need to work on the audio track, I will do that. Now, a quick explanation as to why I have these tracks set up the way that I do. Pinnacle Studio uh, renders things from top to bottom, meaning that whatever's on the bottom is going to be the lowest layer. So that's going to be your background. 
Everything else is going to build up on top of that. If you have tracks that have images or text or anything like that, and they don't have audio, turn the audio here to mute. The reason being that Studio, when it renders a video, is going to try to treat every one of these tracks as though it has audio on it. And if it has no audio, it will generate static, and that will ruin your video. The intro, outro are videos that do have audio, so I'm going to leave that on. And I also may add some other things that might have some audio, uh, maybe a little video clip or something like that. I want to be able to drop it on this track and not have to worry about opening up these other tracks. And then the audio track obviously is going to be open and then the supplemental audio will be uh, open as well. So that gives a little bit of flexibility with that. So this is the basic setup. Now I'm going to begin laying out the introductory portion of my videos. And I have a format that I've followed for just about every one of these. So this is a pretty set format. You'll develop your own workflow and your own pattern and your own format. This is just how I arrived at this. So I'm going to switch over to a split screen view to show the um, setup. But before I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab the audio that I want to use. Now, I'm using one of my Bible study lessons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I click on the audio track and I have the playhead at the very beginning, and I can make sure that it's at the beginning by hitting this button here. So it's at the beginning. I can hit this, and I can have it go down to the audio track. Now, I know that the first paragraph of this is going to be where I'm going to do a break. I'm going to drop in a graphic and I may drop in a title with the actual video title. So at this point, I'm going to switch over to a split screen so that I can demonstrate how I do that. And then that's going to really set the stage for talking about uh, title tracks and things later. I record my audio for each video as a single file. After placing it into studio, I need to split it and move it so my intro video can be added. That'll also affect the placement of markers, graphics, and titles later, as well as timing text and transitions.